Swimming Pool Steve here with an equipment installation review. Let's get started right away. So we have a couple of inch and a half lines coming up out of the ground. We've got some uh, single union ball valves here. Got a T back together into a single line straight into the pump. Uh, it's pretty good. I'd like to see all this rigid plumbing as opposed to the spa flex. I guess if I want to be picky here, the only thing I would have done is I would have made this straight run just a little bit longer. This union's a fairly serious flow restriction and we should have maybe 10 inches minimum of straight run unobstructed into the pump. Is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's not leaking. The pump's running without any air in it. It's good. But could it be incrementally better? Yes, it could be. So out of the top side of this, uh, this Hayward Super Pump, which is bonded and fantastic. We go into these, this nice big uh, Hayward cartridge filter. This diverter valve here, very likely that line just chases out to a discharge line or a backwash line from an old sand filter. The idea being is that uh, because you don't need to backwash these cartridge filters, if the pool overfills with water, you'd have to go get a submersible pump and drop it into the water and drain it out. Whereas with this configuration, this, you can probably barely read that, but it says off there. If I were to turn off to here, that means the water will come in this way and all exit out through that, that backwash line. Right now, that backwash line is closed, so the water just goes straight into the cartridge filter and then back out of the cartridge filter. So that's a pretty smart idea. Uh, if, you have, if you're plumbing in a cartridge filter, add in that diverter valve so that you can have a backwash or a way to drain the pool should it overfill. Uh, so out of the cartridge filter here, straight into the heater. We've switched over to Spa Flex here from Rigid for whatever reason. Uh, I prefer to see it all one thing. Rigid is my, my preferred, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's okay. Uh, out of the heater, we've got a street elbow into a one-way check valve into a low salt uh, Hayward system into a got the flow switch there and then back down into the return manifold. Now, the check valve itself is a huge flow restriction. The street elbow is a pretty big flow restriction. I would have preferred to see maybe coming straight out for a little bit before 90ing up. Um, it's significant here with this flow switch that that has not been installed according to the manufacturer's instructions. What should have happened with that flow switch is there should be 10 times the pipe diameter before it and they do consider the, the salt cell itself to be part of that free run. So this actually looks like it's probably meeting it on the supply side, but on the return side, we should have four times the pipe diameter and a straight run out of the top of this flow switch, which we do not have. We have a two by one and a half reducing bushing into a street elbow right away. So again, a very serious flow restriction right here. Is this wrong? Well, I guess not because the system's operating, the flow switch is closing the way it's supposed to be, the salts uh, making chlorine like it's supposed to be, but could this be better? Yes, it could. You can get intermittent problems where all it is is a, a very soft piece of metal in there that when the, the water is, is uh, flowing, it causes it to move slightly and it closes a contact point. If you get any turbulence in the water like you're going to get when the water hits this brick wall of a street elbow here, you can end up with that giving you kind of fluttering back and forth and giving you an intermittent signal in which case your salt is not generating even though you suspect that it might be. Uh, so just to eliminate that kind of problem, 10 times the pipe diameter before and 4 times the pipe diameter following any flow switch for a salt cell. Um, everything else looks good here. The manifold looks good. The heater itself is, is very old, um, but not bonded. So there is, no, there is no bonding lugs on this heater. It's not bonded anywhere. That isn't ideal and it should be bonded in the same way that that is bonded there. In fact, if this were my equipment, I would probably just run a tail over from there and install a copper bonding lug on the casing of this heater. Uh, but if you've seen my other videos, you know that I really like seeing that that check valve there. That means that somebody knows that this chlorine needs to be prevented from traveling backwards and ruining that heater. Uh, but I suspect this system has been worked on recently because that cartridge filter looks pretty new. That salt system only became available last year. Uh, that's the Hayward Low Salt System. It's not even available in most areas in the States. It's something that's relatively new in Canada here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it looks pretty good, better than most, but uh, as with all my videos, there's always one or two things that could be better.